Joe here from Cask and Kettle Homebrew in Booton, New Jersey with your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. Dealing with larger quantities of wort requires efficient cooling. There are three major ways to tackle this. One of the most common is the immersion chiller. And this is generally where most beginners will start. It's easy to maintain, easy to clean, and fairly easy to use. However, it's the least efficient for the amount of water that it wastes. You simply attach this to your garden hose or water feed. The outlet is put into the sink or into the grass. You place the chiller inside of your pot and let the water run while you stir. An alternate option, which is a bit more efficient on our water usage, is a counterflow chiller. A counterflow chiller works by sending the wort in one direction while pumping water in the opposite direction. As the two streams pass, the wort inside of a copper tube embedded in this hose and the water on the outside, the heat transfer occurs. This system is more efficient for water, however, due to having to tune in the flow rates between the wort exiting and the water entering, it can add some time to the duration needed for an immersion chiller. Last but not least is a plate chiller. A plate chiller is going to require the usage of a pump. It cannot be gravity fed like its counterflow counterpart. Similarly to the counterflow chiller, it will require you to tune in the flow rates of both the incoming water and the outgoing wort. Once these are tuned in, they will be your most efficient option. Generally speaking, immersion chillers are on the lower end of the cost spectrum, whereas counterflow chillers are in the middle and plate chillers are on the top. To learn more about DIY customization, click on the link below to purchase and download the full class.